This is our $500 Civic. And today, we're gonna be putting $5,000 worth of brakes on it. Is $5,000 worth of brakes really gonna be worth the money? Let's find out. So you might be wondering, why do we need better brakes? Uh, you just saw that these brakes can lock up the tires, but the big problem with these brakes is how small they are and how quickly they overheat. They get brake fade very easily. Last time we were out in the canyons, after just a couple passes and honestly not using the brakes all that much, they were fading. And that means that when you push the brake pedal, not as much happens as you would like, which is a pretty scary thing. So today we're gonna be upgrading the front and rear brakes. We've got some sick spoon parts and we're gonna be replacing the rear drums with discs. So after today, this thing should stop a lot better and do it for a lot longer. Generally speaking, when you're replacing uh, brake calipers and rotors, all you really have to do is take off the caliper, disconnect the line, take off the rotor, and then reverse that to put the new stuff on. But it's not gonna be quite that simple on this car. Like we've talked about in the past, this is about as base model of a Civic as you could get. So what that means is that the brakes are tiny. And what that means beyond that is that the knuckle here is not gonna work with our new brakes. So we're gonna take the brakes off, then we're also gonna take the whole knuckle off and replace it with one from a higher trim model Civic. Ah, there we go. Looks just like a knuckle, doesn't it? Not really. Ah, well, anyway, this is what we needed to remove from the car to replace from a higher trim model unit from a different Civic. Right here where the brake caliper mounts, it's too far inboard. So you'll see the pieces that we're replacing it with stick out a little further. It's gonna let us have a little bit bigger brakes. Okay, so here's the old one. A little kind of dinky, kind of smaller all around versus this one, which is a little bit beefier with that bigger brake mounting bracket. Another nice benefit is that we've got a fresh lower ball joint, which is something I didn't want to have to do. So it's great, it's already in here. Now this in and of itself is not that sexy, not that fun, not that cool, but what it lets us install is pretty cool. So let's take a look at the brakes that we bought. Now we're gonna throw up our rotor. This is a genuine <laughs> Honda rotor which is nice for future replacements. But then, the pace, the resistance. We got some spoon brakes, baby. And that thing is lightweight. Spoon is known as one of the best, most revered aftermarket performance companies for Hondas. The parts are known to be really high quality as well as really steezy. So these things are gonna look awesome when they're installed and they're gonna work even better. There are four piston designs, so we'll get nice even pad pressure on a bigger pad, so we'll get nicer bite and they're gonna dissipate heat really well. Partially because they're larger, they can handle more heat, but also they're made out of aluminum, so that'll help us resist fade, which those are the two things we're looking for. Now you can't forget about the lines. We also installed these spoon stainless steel braided lines. These don't flex at all when you hit the brake pedal, which translates to better brake feel. So as we're flying down the canyons, I'll know exactly what's happening through my foot. It's gonna be great. I can't wait. Ooh. Ah. All right, and in true spoon fashion, the brake pads are yellow. Blue and yellow, baby. Pop that guy in there. And this guy right up in to here. <sighs> yeah, getting all hot and bothered. Anyways, while I work on the brakes, Shop Daddy Adam is gonna replace the master cylinder. There it is. This is the old brake master cylinder. And all this does is just send the fluid front and back when you press on the brake. This one's bigger. Since we've got more fluid, bigger brakes, and disc going in the back, we need this one from just newer Integras. It's a direct bolt-on, easy swap. Okay, so at the rear, we have drum brakes these little units. These were very commonplace up until not too terribly long ago. Basically what's going on in here, there's two brake shoes, which is basically the brake pads. And uh, as you hit the brakes, those are forced outwards and they push against this outer drum to slow the car down. And they work okay. They're annoying to work on and they're not very good at braking. So we're gonna get rid of these and replace them with some discs. So down here, I have a whole trailing arm setup from an Integra that came with disc brakes. So we gotta take all this out, put all this in. Ooh. 
Easy as that. Now, we gotta put that in its place. But first I have to transfer that. Okay, so got the arm in place there. We'll wait to tighten it up until this is all in place. So the most annoying part about this is just gonna be fishing the e-brake cable up to where it needs to go while hoisting up this uh, trailing arm. It's not super heavy. It's also not super light. Watch me struggle. And y'all probably know how a disc brake works, but in case you don't, here it is in simple terms. You got the rotor here, which is spinning all the time that you're driving. It's attached to your wheel, basically. And then when you want to stop and you hit the brake pedal, well, this caliper that's sitting here stationary does a little pinch action and it just squeezes on the rotor and brings you down to a nice gradual stop or a screaming halt, depending on how hard you push. So we replaced the drums with the disc for a couple reasons. We save a little bit of weight and we get a lot better braking. Coupled with the front brakes, this thing is gonna be a stopping machine. All right, so while we're at the rear of the car finishing installing the new disc brakes, Heber was up front pulling out the old proportioning valve, and this is our new proportioning valve. And what the proportioning valve does is kind of what it sounds like. It proportions the amount of brake power that goes to the front brakes versus the rear brakes. And since we have disc brakes in the rear now, we're gonna want a little bit more juice to go to the rear. So this proportioning valve is from an Integra, and it's from a car that had disc brakes to begin with. So we're gonna put that sucker right in there, and then we should pretty much be good to go. Throw some fluid in it, bleed it, and hit the streets. So in addition to the brakes that we're putting on here, we are scavenging the wheels and tires from the Miata, just for now, but I want this thing to look a little bit cooler. Though the fit is gonna be a little aggressive, so we need to roll the fenders. However, our fender roller is a little too tall for the job, so I think it's gonna be hammer time. Stop! Stop! Jimmy! You're hurting the car! Watch me! <laughs> no. You wanna try? <laughs> that might be just enough. We'll check and then probably hammer some more. It's gonna be okay. Is it? I don't know. <laughs> okay, back to working on the brakes. Now that we've got everything bolted up, it's time to refill the system with brake fluid and bleed them brakes. And pump it. And again. And again. That's gonna be good. I don't know exactly what's going on, but we just bled the brakes and this brake caliper ain't letting go. Well, I just bled the pressure out of this caliper and now we can move it. So my concern is that we got a bad caliper. Once pressure comes in, it's not letting it back out. So we're just gonna try to bleed it again and see if anything changes. Pump it up. Uh -huh. Now I'll hit the brakes. Now it doesn't. Now let go. Hey man, if I've learned anything is that things fix themselves all the time. Yeah, we'll go with that. It works? Yeah. Sometimes you take it apart, you put it back together and it's all better. All right, our brake install is complete. We got the spoons up front with the stock discs out back. We've got our new proportioning valve. We bled the brakes. We even took the wheels and tires off the Miata so that we could have a nice grippy tire to take advantage of all of our new braking force. So now the next thing we need to do is hit the streets. We're gonna bed in the brakes and then we'll see how our new brakes feel. Let's go. So the idea or the point of bedding your brakes is to get your brakes nice and hot and in doing so you will transfer some of that pad material from the brake pads over to the rotors. And that's really how brakes work. The rotors are always coated in some pad material. So the point of bedding the brakes is just to get a nice even coating of that material. If the coating on your rotors is uneven, you can get brake shuddering, even to the point that it feels like your rotors are warped. That's really all we're doing here is trying to get a nice even coating to make them work as good as they can. So to do that, we're just gonna hit the streets 
and hit the brakes a bunch of times. But you don't actually want to come to a stop. You want the rotors to always keep spinning so that they're just getting a nice even coating. So what we're gonna do is try to hit like 50 miles an hour and come to a hard slowdown down to about 10 miles an hour. Just to get going, just to get started, get some heat into the brakes, I'll just kind of drive and hit the brake and gas at the same time and kind of power through the brakes for a while. At first, they'll feel a little bit slippery, but by the end, they're gonna feel real grippy. Oh, look, and somebody's pulling out in front of me. Oh, baby. Now we keep going, do it again, and again, and again, and again. Okay, there's 50, let's bring her to a stop. Now when you're doing this, you will notice the braking getting better and better. And big brakes. Oh, yeah. Oh, come up to a red light. Better come to a stop. Okay, you can hear I locked up at least one of the wheels there a little bit. And as soon as I heard that, back off. Let the wheels keep spinning. Well, yeah. Oh, yeah, they're starting to bite. What a machine! Starting to smell the brakes a little bit, which is good. That's how you know you are getting nice and warm. Oh yeah. Okay, and that is bedding your brakes. These brakes are bed and they are ready to rip. They feel great, brake pedal feels great, and by golly, I couldn't be happier. All right, well this little car is coming a long way in just a short period of time. All right, the brakes feel as good as they look. Now this thing is stopping on a dime. It's also handling well because we've done suspension on it. So now, I think it's time to get this thing a little more power, baby. But that's gonna be for next time. Thank you guys for watching this episode. I hope you enjoyed it. I hope you learned a thing or two. I hope you love this little Civic as much as I do. And if you do, let us know in the comments what you wanna see us do next or what you think we're gonna do for more power. Don't forget to subscribe to the channel, like the video, and throw that comment down there because I'll be looking. You can follow me on Instagram, at Zach Job. Follow Donut, at Donut Media. And I'll see you guys next time.